Hello and welcome to another Ask Nerida Joy video. I have Katie back here with us today and this is Katie's second treatment. Um, Katie, how, how long ago did we have you here last? Was that one month ago? So we saw Katie for the first time a month ago. And when I saw Katie last time, I talked to her about, and all of you, about her surface dehydration. Her skin was so dry. And I think what she had told us too is that she really wasn't putting anything too much on her face because she was concerned about, um, you know, making her skin break out. Her skin, her whole life had been oily and she'd had problems with that. And since uh, moving here, her skin was just so, so dry. So um, we've, I've touched her skin um, just a few moments ago and it doesn't feel anywhere near what it was a month ago, which I'm really happy about. Um, I can see that her scarring on her cheeks, like her skin does look a lot smoother. Her pore size looks really good as well. But, um, but she said she's feeling a little bit pink. We are getting into the, the warmer months over here now. Um, she said her skin's getting a little bit pink and I had asked her about a sunscreen and she said she is only using a sunscreen when she goes out in the sun. So I am giving her a sunscreen today that I will want, to, I'll have her use it on a daily basis. And um, because as you start to buffer back the skin and you start to help any form of scarring with uh, retinols and AHAs, then what happens is um, it does make the skin a little bit more sensitive to the sun. So we want to make sure that she's protected from the sun really well coming into the warmer months. And but as I said, her skin feels so much better. It just it looks a lot better. Her cheeks look a lot better. But after today, we're going to give it another boost. Um, as we said, this is her second treatment. So we really want to make sure that uh, we're giving it a nice boost and, and in every way. So we're going to start off with the cleanser. We're going to cleanse off her skin now and use the, uh, the cleansing gel here. This is a non-foaming cleanser. And so we're just going to work this into her skin. And this is Katie's cleanser that she uses at home as well. So we're just going to work this in. But her skin feels so much better. It's really, really nice. Okay, we're gonna use the sponges and take that off. So these sponges are my disposable sponges that I like to use on a lot of people. Especially if you're working on men, you can't, um, sponges are really great to, to work with because you can sort of maneuver and get under the whiskers better. So it's good to have sponges for, if you work with a lot of male clients. So and again, whenever we're doing any movements here, we are going upwards with our product and our sponges so that we're getting under any fine facial hair that's on the sides of the face. Someone asked me why it is I do this uh, with a, a tissue. I don't always but, um, but sometimes in cleansing the face if I feel that I've got a little bit heavy with the cleanser around the nose area it's uncomfortable to your client having that feeling of a little cleanser by the nose. So, um, and also the fact that I'm going to be bringing the Maggie lamp over and bringing you with me to have a look at Katie's skin through the Maggie lamp and uh, so I just don't want to let it dry on its own. So I'm going to put some goggles over Katie's eyes. We are going to bring the Maggie lamp down. I'm going to ask the cameraman if you wouldn't mind bringing the camera over so you can have a look with me. So what we're looking at here is Katie's forehead and I don't remember the last time there we'll put a picture in here so you can see what her forehead looked like before. It was very, very surface dry. Her forehead today is so much better. And when it's when it's not a surface dry, like you can't see, like it looks a lot younger, the, the forehead looks a lot younger because you don't have those fine little lines that make the skin look older from just dryness. Her pore size looks really good on her forehead as well. And now we're gonna move the Maggie lamp down to her cheek area. So we're going to move it over here. So now we have, um, we're looking at her left cheek again. You're looking at a cheek that is, her pitting is so much better. It's so much smoother. It's not as deep. Her pore size is really good. Even around her nose area, it's looking a lot better. So we're, we're shrinking pore size here and we are lessening the depth of some of this scarring, which is so great. But her skin just feels so much healthier because it was so surface dry 
when we first saw Katie a, a month ago. What I'm doing here is I have some of the exfoliating mask, uh, a little bit of healing gel. We are mixing them together and we're making sure that our client's eyes are closed. Whenever you're working over your client, you wanna make sure their eyes are closed so that nothing is splashing into their eyes. So we're going to work this in, uh, this, as I said uh, in the past, this exfoliating mask. And there are a lot of great exfoliating masks out there that are also a cream base like this one. Um, an exfoliating mask that is a cream base that has a little bit of glycolic in it. It has, um, this particular one has a papaya enzyme. It also has lemon peel powder. And what it does, it has a little bit of chamomile in it. Uh, it's, uh, it's a really good exfoliation uh, on the skin because it absorbs dead cells. So it's what we call a surface regenerative. It has a buffing effect on the epidermis and it really absorbs those dead cells, eats away at them without it being abrasive on the skin because a lot of the time when you're working with granules, um, a lot of the granules in exfoliants are not smooth and rounded and pounded. So they're very scratchy on the skin. It's just that you can't see that unless you're looking under a very magnified lamp. So what's really nice about exfoliants that are a cream base is that they do have that buffing effect on the epidermis and they are not scratchy and that's really important. There are other brands out there that also have excellent exfoliants that are cream based and I, a, a couple that come to mind is uh, Valmont have one which is called um, the uh, Clarifying Pack and that one again another excellent it does have some of the niacinamides in it as well but it's another excellent exfoliant and another exfoliating mask that I think is also really nice is La Prairie they have one which is a three minute peel it's called and that's another one again it has a little bit of glycolic in it but it has that buffing effect so there are different kinds of exfoliants out there that are really nice and uh, it's important if um, if you're using uh, you know, an exfoliant, and a lot of people need them uh, to, just to help keep their skin clean, especially if the skin's more oily, then at least you have some different options. You know? So if you prefer certain brands, then there are, um, there are quite a lot of other ones too that I, um, I haven't even mentioned, but there are quite a lot. So we've worked that into the skin. Again, when you're working in any exfoliant, you wanna make sure you're doing circular motions, be constantly working it in, getting it into the pores, around the nose, uh, above the lip, uh, the chin area, uh, working it in well around up here. This area here is often neglected. A lot of people wearing glasses. And this area, if you're an oily skin person, this area here right between the brow does get a lot of blackheads. So you wanna make sure you're cleaning it really well. And it's not just the cheeks and the other areas. You wanna sort of really put effort into those areas and up here underneath and close by the eye up under here is also another area. If you are an oily skin person, then you are gonna have blackheads very close up there by that eye area. So you wanna make sure you're really cleaning it well. So we're going to remove the exfoliant right now. Katie's eyeshadow looks so pretty. <laughs> now as we get into these summer months, what happens in the summer months is for people that tend to be more oily is the skin is more active. So oil glands are more active in the summer months. Your hair will grow faster in the summer months and you, you will have um, more active sebaceous glands. So, you know, expect that to happen. So what, what do you do to compensate that is you make sure, number one, that you're cleaning your skin really, really well and that you're not being lazy with that. And number two, that you're using your exfoliant, maybe instead of once a week, you're using it twice a week. So it's something that's very important. You wanna make sure that, again, you're getting up on the sides when we talked about being an oily skin, having more sebaceous activity here, um, an area that often gets neglected. And here, either side of the nose, up under by the eyes too, is an area where there is blackheads. But also you've got over here by the ears. So a lot of the time, um, you know, there's blackheads right by the ear on the side here. And you want to make sure, again, if you're an oily skin person, you have to clean those areas really well. The other thing is not to forget behind the ears. 
So you want to also sort of be cleaning behind the ears because you're perspiring a lot more in the summer months. So you want to make sure you're cleaning your skin really well because otherwise you're going to get blackheads there. And you often can't see them because obviously you can't see your face over here. Um, and it's, uh, but you'll, you can feel them. So it's really important to clean well around your ear area, by the, the neck if you have shorter hair or just sort of anybody if you're working out. Just make sure you're taking that cleanser around and you're really sort of cleaning the back of your neck and you're cleaning right behind your ears and you're doing a good job um, with the cleanser as well as your exfoliant. So we've cleansed off um, Katie's skin. We've done an exfoliant on her and her skin is, is so much better. It's really clean. It's a very clean skin and, uh, and it's not anywhere near a surface dry. And I can't wait to have a look at her pictures before a month ago because I know her skin is significantly different. So I'm looking forward to, um, to pulling those up and comparing from what I'm looking at here today. So what I'm going to start doing now is I'm going to start feeding her skin some nutrients because that's what helps scarring. You've got to feed the skin nutrients and we've mixed a little bit of retinol with that as well. And we're going to work this into the skin. Now I'm going to add a little bit of healing gel to my hands here and we're going to just work this in well to the skin. I'm going to do quite a strong massage on Katie. I want to do different types of moves on her skin to make sure that we're really getting into the, um, the mild pitting. It's not that it's not really deep but we want to make sure we're doing different moves to really work the product in to get down to the base of the pit. Now the healing gel that I'm adding is mostly aloe vera. It is 98% aloe vera and it's very soothing and calming and it's a, a nice added product to have if you're an oily skin person especially or a younger person. I'm going to add <clears throat> another layer of the Q flavonoid and my retinol on her skin right now. Here we are. <clears throat> We've mixed the Q and uh, the Q flavonoid and a little bit of the A retinol again. This is now her second coat of this going on her skin. And as I said, we're going to make sure that we're really getting to the base of the pit. We want to get to the base of the pit, work it in, because we all have fine facial hair on our face unless you are removing it. Uh, you want to make sure that you're getting under that fine facial hair and that you're really working your product in because facial hair is a protectant and it, um, it does protect your skin from a lot of different things, uh, positive and negative. The negative is that it does, unless you are massaging your product into your skin really well, it does protect your skin from, from that product getting down deeper into the, the base of the skin, the top of the skin. So you want to make sure that you're getting under your movements here. You're really getting under the fine facial hair and we're working the product into the skin. We're doing different motions here to get it into the skin because that's where Katie has her pitting, is on her cheeks. So we want to be doing different movements to get it in. Now some have said to me, well what about microneedling? Can I do microneedling? Now microneedling has a place in the business and sometimes when you're dealing with scarring, sometimes it can be of benefit. I don't do microneedling at all. I don't have it done myself either and the reason being is that if you are having microneedling done in, if you do tend to go a little too deep, you can upset pigment cells again. So a lot of people that are having microneedling done, they're going to end up with um, blotchiness, with melasma of a form. And, uh, and so for me, I prefer to use products than I do tools because I can do, I believe, a lot with my products. Now, some will say, but if you do the microneedling and then you put your products on, it's going to go deeper. And, 
And I would say to that, yes, that is, is very true. It um, likely will go deeper. But I don't want to have blotchiness because blotchiness is very difficult to get rid of. And already now that microneedling has been around for some time, the vampire facials, the different treatments that they're doing, um, people are experiencing blotchiness and more melasma. So it's our biggest nightmare in our business is dealing with melasma. And even for a lot of you that have watched me work with uh, Critica and Azure, and some of my clients that have melasma, it they still have melasma. And of course, now we're in the summer months, it has got better and their brown spots have got lighter, but they still have melasma. Now, that's the hardest thing. As you know, it just takes one time in some fabulous sunny place like Cabo or Hawaii, where you have a very clean sky and a very bright sun, and you can get that melasma right back again. And, uh, you know, it's very, very difficult. So I do not want to do anything that is going to be more risky business for melasma because that is the hardest thing to get rid of. And once you have it, um, it's, it's very tricky to keep it at bay. So my point being is that I am going to work with products and I'm going to continue to you know, work in different products. I'll work with stronger things sometimes and anything I can to uh, to get it in there. I work with um, products that have a really clean, a great liposuitical vehicle. They're a little stronger than a lot of products. So, you know, obviously you've seen from the results that I get in my videos that um, it works and that's what we want, um, products that work. So it's, um, I'm not against it for other people, but for me, I, it's just not what I choose to do. So if you, I have had questions, people asking me, you know, well, what about doing microneedling and it would get in faster? And yes, it would, but it's also a problematic. And I shared a story on a video that um, actually um, will be coming out about my sister and the importance of how vitamin A affected her skin. And it's really important that you understand that vitamin A is, um, is wonderful, which is your retinols, but it's also very strong and very, uh, you know, in, in, in strong forms, which is why I never prescribe retinols. Uh, prescription strength is that it is toxic for a lot of people. So I share a story on a, um, a video um, that uh, uh, Brianna's video and it is a story about my sister and what vitamin A has done to her health. So I urge you all to listen to it so that you are aware because if you are someone who is using retinols and it's very important that you know and understand what uh, the power of retinols. Um, and if you're opening up the skin and doing microneedling, then it is also very important that you understand what you're doing and, um, and the risks that, uh, that things can happen. So it's, um, I urge you to watch that video if you have not seen it already. So we are working in, again, we're working in retinols, we're working in the Q-flavonoids, we, um, we've mixed a little bit of healing gel with it. I'm doing a massage on the skin. I'm really working it in. I wanted to get to the base of that pit. As I've mentioned for Katie, we want to really work it in. Her pore size on her nose is very, very small. And I think from last time, I remember her pore size being small, which for an oily skin is unusual because most people with oily skin have larger pores. Um, Katie's is not like that. So her skin is different in that way. And it's, it's really, it's great. She's not having to sort of battle with that. But what we are working with and what we really do want to do for Katie is we want to improve her texture. Now her texture from her first time, and we can slip in a photo here again to see, um, her skin looks about 30% better to me on her cheeks. Um, but I do want to go back and look at those photos and just see the comparison because sometimes um, it's, it's quite shocking even to me how much better you can get somebody's skin in a short time and just with, um, you know, a couple or one or two treatments. So we're going to look back at those. And uh, again, I'm just working in this product into her skin, doing different movements here just to get into that base of the pit. We want to work it in really deep and just get it down to that bottom of that pit. As I'm doing Katie's skin, I see this brown freckle that I have on my hand, and I'm looking at it thinking, huh, it's got a little darker than I, so I, um, I also have to remember to, I usually in the summer months, 
wear longer sleeves when I'm driving and um, the, with a hole through the fingers so that I protect my hands and I'm noticing that that brown spot is darker so I'm going to have to bring out my gear again to protect my hands. Her skin is really clean, it's really good. So I'm working in quite, quite hard on, on uh, Katie's skin. We're really getting that retinol, really getting it in well. I'm going to be putting a mask on here over top of this. We're leaving it on her skin. We're putting a mask on over top. And uh, I'm going to be using the purifying on Katie. Now this is another area here, which is right here um, in the center of the lip below the nose. An area that sometimes, you know, th this part here, the sides often get the fine little vertical lines, but this area here sometimes, and Katie just has a couple of little holes there, again, it's very small amount of pitting. You want to make sure it's an area that you're not forgetting. So make sure you work your product well into that area too. Okay, so we've worked in, we've, we've first we've cleansed Katie's skin off, we've done the exfoliating mask mix with a little bit of the healing gel. I've worked very heavily in retinols and the Q-flavonoid. Um, we'll add a little bit of healing gel with that. I'm going to put the purifying mask on over top of, she's still got retinol, she's still got flavonoid on her skin, a little bit of the healing gel. I've worked it in, I've done different movements on her to get it at different angles just to help get it into that base of the pit on her cheeks especially. I've got the purifying mask here, we're going to be putting this on over top of the, the retinol, a Q flavonoid and the healing gel and we're just going to work that in for a minute and this is going to be staying on her skin for about eight minutes. I'm going to add a little bit of healing gel to my fingers too right now as we work this in. Okay, so we have the mask on Katie. I'm going to wash my hands and be back and I'm going to put a little bit of eye gel around her eyes. Okay, we are back. We are taking off Katie's mask. I did, um, I put the purifying mask on, uh, which is a clay-based mask, on over top of the Q-flavonoid and the retinol serum. And it also had a little bit of the healing gel with it. I also did put a little bit of the eye gel so that the mask didn't dry up too close around the eye areas. So she has that on. We're taking it all off right now. It was on her skin for um, about uh, six to eight minutes. When you work with skin care, it's a process. So sometimes you, the first and most important thing is that you have to make sure that you're using the right cleanser. Um, you have to get rid of surface dryness. You can't treat somebody's skin when they're surface dry. So whether you're an esthetician out there or whether you are a consumer, if you are not getting results with your skin, it most likely is because number one, your cleanser is not right or that you are surface dry. And surface dryness is what we call a subcondition. So it's something that you can change, okay? You cannot change your skin type. You are born with a skin type. As we get older, if you are an oily skin, your skin will generally get a little bit less oily, but it, you know, you are born with a skin type and that stays that way. What does change is what we call subconditions. And that's the outer layer that is affected by the internal environment, by air conditioning and heating, um, by the external, the weather, and by your treatment products. So if you're using a foaming cleanser that's too stripping on your skin, it's gonna make your skin surface dry. And surface dryness is a huge problem. I talk about this a lot. If you are not getting results with your products, then look at your cleanser. Are you cleansing your skin well? Because a lot of the time when I see pictures that people have sent in and they might be saying that they're not getting results as quickly as they want, often I can look at the skin and see their skin is not being cleaned right. So I don't want to be able to see blackheads that are sticking out from the nose because if I'm seeing that, I know if I touch it, it's not going to feel good and it's not going to be smooth because you're not cleansing your skin right. So if you are not getting results with your skin, you need to look at your cleanser because nine times out of 10, it's probably that you're not cleansing correctly. Either you're lazy with your cleansing or you're using the wrong cleanser and you have to exfoliate. You've got to clean, you've got to keep your skin clean. It's really important because that makes the difference for when you go to use your treatment products on your skin thereafter. 
So have a look at that. If you're not getting fast results, you need to look at that. Now, once you've, you've achieved the good cleaning and the no longer having surface dryness, then you can start feeding your skin nutrients. And now your skin's going to heal quickly if you have scarring. So understand it's a process. You can't just go in and fix everything at one time if you have surface dryness. So surface dryness is a major problem. You've got to fix that first, okay? Um, so now, oh my gosh, Katie's skin looks amazing. Her skin is, as I said before, we have done not any extractions on her. She's being really good with her cleaning at night. I know because I can see that she's been doing a really good job with it. Her scarring on her cheeks, her pitting is, is very little. She, you know, her skin is going to be amazing in about four months. You will maybe not even see that she even had anything at all in about four months. So what we will do is we're going to continue on. I'm going to put on the Q flavonoid again on Katie's skin. I'm going to put retinol on her, a moisturizer over top, an eye gel, and she will go home and she'll continue doing her regimen. We will have her come back in about um, a little bit longer than a month this next time because I want her to be using it for longer and I want you to be able to see just what home care can do because someone like Katie doesn't really need to be having facials um, you know so regularly um, most people that have a really oily skin they need the extractions to keep their skin clean Katie on the other hand does not need the extractions the same her pore size is very small her skin is very very clean so she's someone if she said to me well, Nerida, when should I see you again next? I would say to her, you know what? If you want to come back in six weeks or two months, that, that would be great. And it's really only to see how she's doing with her pitting because her skin is very, very clean. Remember, this is a month. Usually an oily skin person, I am wanting to see them about every, you know, three weeks. So uh, just to keep their skin really clean. So, but, but her skin is, is just so much better. It looks really fantastic, actually. So I'm really happy with her skin. And we'll have Katie come back in about six weeks. And you'll be able to see the improvement again because she's going to continue using her active products at home and uh, for her regimen. And um, we're going to see it uh, will have improved that much more even in that time. So this here is a little bit of the retinol and a little bit of healing gel that I put on her skin and I'm going to put a little bit of the Q on as well. Now other people have asked me well can I just get an aloe vera plant and break open the leaf and put that on my face and no you cannot because the aloe vera plant although it is great to put on the body if you have a cut uh, it is too strong for the face and you can get a chemical burn and uh, I have seen it time and time again so and then you can end up with dermatitis so um, you have to be very very careful um, aloe vera the plant itself a lot of natural all natural ingredients or all natural plants you can't put them directly on the skin they're too strong and a lot of the oils and things you have to be very very careful and um, so we now are going to put on a little bit of moisturizer Okay, and she is all good. So her skin looks amazing. I'm really happy with Katie's skin. It looks really great. It is uh, more youthful, it's brighter, it's, the pitting is less, her forehead is great. It's nowhere near as surface dry. Oh my gosh, it was so dry. I, I couldn't believe it when I touched it that first time. It was just like, oh my gosh, how can she walk around with it like this? But now she knows different because she knows how her skin should feel. And um, it just looks really pretty. Her skin looks so pretty. So thank you again for coming in and um, being with us again, Katie. And thank you all again for being here to watch another Ask Nerida Joy video. We will be back to see you all again soon. Bye-bye.